It's another Supergirl vlog here, and I finally remembered I had one of these smartphone tripod things. Yeah, I did not realize how much my one hand was shaking during these, so I do apologize for that. Hopefully I'll remember to use this from now on. And, oh, jeez. I needed this episode to be good. I, I really did. Not because of my expectations and, you know, she's my favorite character and all the other stuff I've rambled on about over the course of the season, but I have had a really rough couple of weeks. Um, stuff going on in my personal life that I'm not going to get into here because I know you guys don't want to hear it and out of respect to other people involved, but... It, yeah, it's just been emotionally draining. <laughs> so I just, I really needed something good. I needed something to give me hope. Okay, maybe that's drastic, but it goes with the episode because it was it was really fantastic. It it wasn't you know it's not top tier. It wasn't as good as the Flash crossover or. Human for a day, but it it just did just about everything right. I mean, the only thing I can say it did wrong are nitpicks, and I understand why they existed. So I mean, but yeah, Myriad is. Just, another thing I like about this show is it it does take me by surprise because you know, at the end of the crossover setting this up, I. Now I don't know, I can't say what I was expecting at this point, but I wasn't expecting it to be non-using everybody's creativity and intelligence to solve the world's problems. And that actually you know, makes a lot of sense considering Ast it was disastrous plan and she turned out she wasn't quite as evil as we thought, so that made a lot of sense. I definitely wasn't expecting that. I was expecting um, he's going to put everyone under mind control so they stop doing stupid shit that's ruining things. I don't know. And I just cursed. I'm sorry. So, yeah, just right from that, I get to go. And right off the bat, it starts with action as stuff's going down at the DEO. Uh, they introduced Maxima into the show, which... I don't want to say she's one of my favorite DC characters, but she's a really good character, and she's pretty obscure, so I'm always glad to see her show up. Oh, God, because... I mean, what happens in the episode was pretty much her backstory at first. She's an alien from another planet, you know, another superpowered alien race that looks just like humans because comic books. And yeah, she was going to come to Earth and make Superman her husband, and that didn't work out. Now the big, the main reason why I like her though is in the comics at least, they real I guess they maybe they realized that was going to get played out real quick, so she eventually works toward redemption. She joins the Justice League, and I don't want to say she was hilarious, but it was she was just fun because you know she's she really is an alien. She doesn't think like the rest of us. Her race is a warrior race. And just there's so much of her interactions with the other Justice Leagues is she doesn't understand why she just can't blow everything up and the other Justice League getting exasperated with her. Now, off the top of my head, I only want, read one story with her in the Justice League, and that was the death of Superman. But she was fantastic in it, and it's been so long since I've read that, it clearly made an impression. And it's just, you know, I don't know, it's funny, it was bad, it was tragic at the time, but it was just funny now, it's just like Blue Beetle, he's basically a normal human, he's kind of like Batman, he's just gotten crushed, and if he doesn't get to the hospital, he's gonna die, and one of the other Justice Leaguers is trying to explain this to Maxima, Maxima's like, well, he, 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 he died a warrior's death, I, I, I gotta go fight the monster now, you know, stuff like that, I don't want to say funny, because that's not the right word, but it's just... She, she's a good character, so I'm happy to see her here, and again, I'm hoping this comes along with like the thing they are building a TV show universe here, where I'm not hoping for a Maxima spinoff by any means, but 
have her redeem herself after a couple episodes where she's the bad guy. I mean, I do hope she shows up again, because in that five minutes she was here, she was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, this episode got dark, too. You know, the mind control, non-making three people jump off the ledge. One of them I feel like we were supposed to know, but I don't remember ever seeing her before this episode. But, yeah, but there's this redhead, I think they said her name was Kelly, and then James and Wynn. And it's one of those things where you can make the argument she was a terrible person for saving her friends, but it's a human moment. I mean, I believe, I, you know, God forbid I'm ever put in a scenario like that two of my very best friends and someone I don't know quite as well, whether I intend to or not, I'm going to go for my friends. I mean, again, it's a moment that makes her really relatable, really, you know, feel for her. And then, um, she had a wonderful talk with Kent Grant. Oh, um, I, I do want to mention this right away because this is one of the things that made me really appreciate this episode considering what I just you know, started this video with, I am a sucker for meta humor, you know, where they, a joke that, you know, winks at the audience, you know, the most obvious example off the top of my head is an episode of My Little Pony where one of the characters says, hey, maybe this is a friendship problem and it'll be over in a half hour or so, stuff like that. So when Cat Grant first shows up in the episode, totally not under con mind control, she's talking about how she doesn't want to date Harrison Ford. <laughs> Because she doesn't date older men, especially older men who are married. And just something off chance of been watching this doesn't get the joke. Calista Flockhart, who plays Cat Grant, is married to Harrison Ford. So, you know, that was hilarious in and of itself. And then um, Maxwell Lord. And again, I, I, despite all the complaining I've done about how they handle the character, the actor is fan freaking tastic. And that really shows in this episode. But, you know, they're talking to Non, and Non talks about how, yeah, he's going to use mind control to save the world. And, you know, Maxwell Lord is, oh, mind control, why did I think of that? <laughs> because, again, from what I, I've, I learned a little bit more about the Maxwell Lord thing since last time I talked about it, but, yeah, that's basically what he's going to do. He was going to use his superpower, his mind control superpowers to save the world, so that... That one took me a second to connect, but uh, that was really good. And again, the actor just sells it. He was on fire this episode. And, you know, driving off the Maxwell Lord point, great bit toward the end where, you know, Supergirl rejects her plan because, and she just points out, you know, you're talking about how you're right about me, how you were afraid I was going to use my power indiscriminately to just take lives and what have you, but that is exactly what your plan is going to do. And, uh, I also realized while watching this episode, I really love the parallels that Cat Grant and Maxwell Lord create each other. Because, you know, Cat, at first glance, comes off as cold and apathetic, more or less. You know, you're all peons. But she's really a kind and caring individual, Meanwhile, Maxwell Lord is charming as all hell. You know, popular, I'm sure he's on like eligible bachelor, bachelor lists and, and world and everything, but he's an a-hole. He is just like, can, yeah, just completely amoral. <laughs> Again, he's Lex Luthor, <laughs> but... And actually, this is something I'm wondering if this is another meta thing, but either way, it was just a really good scene. Cat gives Supergirl a pep talk, and she's talking about how Supergirl changed her, how she start, started letting people in and trying to be a kinder person. And I'm just wondering if they just did that to sort of address the fact that, you know, everybody hated Cat in the first few episodes, and now she's actually a decent human being. I mean, one could make the argument that explains where it came from out of nowhere, but it never really felt like it came out of nowhere to me. It just, 
it felt natural at the very least it progressed with the show because i mean yeah you've heard me talk about it at length at this point this show has hit some rough patches but as me and my roommate were discussing the last few episodes of they it really seems like they've hit their stride it's this is getting good this is i mean a really good episode of supergirl is as good as a good episode of flash i in the case of a couple, I would say they're better than some of Flash's best episodes. And Flash has been my benchmark. I mean, I was was not expecting the show to be just solidly good as it is. I mean, I'm a casual Flash fan at best, and I sure as heck don't really care for Barry Allen. I would prefer Wally West. But just everything about that show pops. It just works, you know? To use the obvious metaphor, it's lightning in a bottle. It's just fantastic. So maybe it's not a fair bar, but it's what I got to go on. It's the best superhero show on right now. And Supergirl is catching up. She really is. I guess it's easiest to make that comparison because they are very similar in tone. I mean, I haven't watched much Arrow, you know, except for the episodes where Barry shows up, but from what I understand, it's pretty grimdark. And, you know, Gotham, while I enjoy the hell out of Gotham, yeah, just that's a completely different beast altogether. I don't want Supergirl go anywhere near that. But, yeah, it's hitting this stride. So, again, CBS, if you somehow end up watching this, please, please give it a second season. It deserves a second. It's really earned its second season. It's gone through a lot. Oh, jeez. Oh, Brainiac 8 or Indigo is back, which makes me happy because, again, you know, the whole meta commentary of it. The only way Laura Vandervoort being in the show could be better if she was playing Power Girl or Matrix. And if you don't know who they are, look it up. But that's just, that would make me just squee. And conceivably, they could turn her into Matrix, but that's a that's a super sidebar. Oh, and um, Helen Slater's back, and, you know, it's always good to see her, even without the meta part. She's really good in this role. Of course, I only really know her from a certain movie. I really don't have any idea what else she's done. But she's a fine actress. I guess that brings me to one of the parts where I'm kind of a nitpick. Because she meets John Jones. She meets the Martian Manhunter. But at first, he's in his, you know, human form of Hank Henshaw. Who, uh, till this episode, or, well, she was never really proven wrong, but she was under the impression that and Kenshaw murdered her husband, so she sees him turning things. I mean, yeah, she rightfully so freaks out. And while I get they had to say, you know, I'm sure that suit or makeup, whatever it is, is expensive. I bet I'd be, I would bet money there's like animatronics in the face. In any case, it's fantastic makeup or suit or whatever it is. So I understand they had him do that to save their budget, to, you know, cut corners where they could. But you couldn't pick another form. I mean, don't get me wrong, I adore David Hardwood I this, in this show. I've only ever known him as a Doctor Who villain before this, but in this show, he, he's fantastic. I am definitely a fan now. And that, just, that just seemed like a really stupid move. But again, I understand the real world reason, so I'm trying not to let it get to me. <sighs> and, you know, and after that comes down, Helen Slater starts quizzing about how this shape-shifting works, and I just thought that was a great moment, because, you know, she's a scientist. She was picked at as Carl's adopted mother because she understands alien physiology and all that physiology. So, yeah, all around this episode was... It was just... It was good. It was really good. And, you know, that cliffhanger. Ugh. Oh, but, oh, yeah, the reason I brought up Hope is, you know, again, um, Supergirl gets really backed into a corner of this, and she considers a really terrible plan just because she doesn't know what else to do, and I'm sure it's one of those things people could argue with, but 
again, it didn't feel forced to me. She did not see a way. I, I couldn't figure a way out. And, you know, I've been reading comic books almost my entire life. Yeah, so I don't blame her for thinking she's backed into a corner. I don't blame her for considering Max's terrible plan, which really wasn't any better than what the aliens were doing. Oh, but... And again, you know, credit to Melissa Benoist. Just that moment, there's a, you give her the pep talk, before the pep talk happened, it's like, you know, Kat basically asks, are you really going to go through with this? And she just collapses. And it's just, again, you feel it. I mean, the fault with this show will never ever be the cast. I mean, as I've mentioned, they've saved some of the less enjoyable episodes just because they, they, they are all in. They are all fantastic actors. And they are giving it their all, and it's just fan-frickin-tastic. And especially Melissa Benoist. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I had my usual, she doesn't look like Supergirl reaction when I very first saw the suit. I mean, it grew on me long before the show ever aired. I think it took me less than a day, but... It's just reached a point where now where I can't ma imagine anyone else playing Kara. Kara. See, so he's got me doing it, too. Oh, so, yes, I... I, I Really needed this episode. I didn't get my Flash or my Supergirl last week when I really could have used it. And, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was good, but it got kind of grimdark. <laughs> so. So, yes. Um, Supergirl writing team, act, cast. I, I doubt you guys are ever going to see this, but. Thank you so much. I I just I needed that so bad, and you you guys delivered. So thank you. And I'll catch you next week for the season finale. Uh, that looks like that's going to be another long one because I just noticed the time. Uh, but you know, thanks for watching.